Hello, my name is Werner. Welcome to Lane Boys RC. So I haven't done an update to my light controller project for RC cars in a while. So let's do that today. We are now currently at the Mark IV generation of the light controller. It is a circuit board that is uh, 27 by 18 millimeters plus maybe another centimeter for the connectors. It is based around the ARM microcontroller from NXP, the LPC812. And compared to the previous big microcontroller, this means that the software is now finally in C programming language and no longer in assembler. So it's much easier to change and maintain. And it's also a bit more powerful. The only downside of the new microcontroller is that it's uh, not as DIY friendly as the previous generation, simply because the packages are now SMD only and you can't get through whole uh, chips anymore. But you can work around that by uh, buying inexpensive adapter boards on eBay. And uh, if you get the SOIC version of the microcontroller, that is uh, still easy to solder. So let's have a look at the uh, basic functions of the light controller. I have here a, a free channel radio. We have steering and throttle, the two channels. And I have here a push button that toggles the channel free between one position and another position every time I press it. So in order to turn the lights on, we have uh, the system of clicks. One click adds more lights. So right now there are the main beams press again, the high beams becomes active. And if you have more uh, light functions, then each press can add more lights. If I do two clicks, then the lights become less. And if I do three clicks, then the lights become on or off. Four clicks enable the uh, hazard lights. And again, another four clicks turn them off. We have also indicator functions, so if I turn the wheel to the left, then the car uh, lights up the indicator on the left side. If I go to neutral, after a short period of time they go out. Go to the right, the right indicator goes on. If I go straight to the left, then all it does, it cancels the uh, uh, right indicator, just like a normal car does. The good thing about the system is that uh, it is also linked to the throttle signal. So if I drive the car, then the indicators do not engage. I find that very important because it means that the indicators only come on when you really want them to come on and uh, do not flash while normal driving. So if you look at the rear lights, we have a tail light function. We have uh, brake light functions, and they come on automatically when I put uh, the throttle lever in neutral. So every time I drive and I stop, then the uh, brake lights come on for a short of time. We also have reversing lights if we go backwards. And again, they go out uh, with a random timeout together with the brake lights all randomized so it gives a kind of a natural look when driving. Of course we have indicators they have to be one second in neutral both in the steering and in the drive functions before they engage to avoid accidentally lighting up. We have hazard lights one two three four just as the front they all go together. So the light controller is designed for a transmitter with a two position switch. But if you don't have a free available channel, then you could also connect a push button directly to the light controller and uh, hide that somewhere in the car so that you would have to, for example, on the roof or so, you have a hidden button, you press it and you would uh, switch uh, the light functions uh, when you're driving around. So it is not necessary to connect all three channels, throttle, steering and channel three, to the light controller. For example, if you only need to have brake light functions and or reversing functions, then if you connect just the throttle, 
uh, these functions work fine without having a steering input or a channel free input. The light controller also has a switch output where you could connect a roof bar or something or here in the uh, Honda Civic Turbo we have uh, underfloor lights that come on when you uh, switch all lights on. The light controller also has support for a winch controller, uh, which you can see a separate video. I will link it in the video description. Furthermore, it has an output where you can connect either a servo for a steering wheel inside the car that moves, or you can also use it uh, for a gearbox like in a Tamiya truck or in a crawler two-speed two gearbox or something like that. It supports up to three gears. The light controller is constant current driven. This means that you don't need a resistor to connect your LEDs. All you need to do is you wire them up directly between the plus pole of your battery source and uh, the light controller. Let's have a look how to connect the light controller to an RC system. So in a normal RC car, we have a receiver, we have a steering servo, and we have a speed controller. And bo both of those plug into the receiver. And uh, unless you have a very ancient system, the speed controller also provides the power to the server and the receiver. Now, if we want to hook up our light controller, then we have to splice the cable to the ESC to get the throttle signal. We have to splice the cable to the servo to get the steering signal. And we run an extra cable to channel 3. And the problem is that not only is there a lot of wiring, but in addition, it also means that because the light controller, usually you want to put inside the body shell, while all the other electronics is inside a chassis, that you have to deal with uh, con disconnecting and connecting all these wires every time you want to separate your body shell from the chassis. And that's uh, not a very good solution. So what you can do instead is uh, you could uh, create a kind of a, a connection board where you basically split all the wires out by having independent connectors and uh, that allows you to have less of a wire mess. You create one five pole cable that is custom to the light controller and uh, that could work fine. But of course it requires quite some effort uh, to make this uh, distribution board and the five pole, uh, pole custom cable. So what I come up instead is what I call a preprocessor. So the preprocessor is a tiny circuit board. It's 17 by 17 millimeter, and it has all the uh, connectors that go from the ESC and then back to your receiver, from the steering server back to the receiver. It connects a channel three, and it has a microcontroller on board on the back that allows to have only a single free pole cable because it multiplexes the steering and the throttle channel and the channel three into one signal. So now the wiring becomes much easier. I hook up my steering channel and then another cable towards the receiver. Channel one. I hook up the throttle from the receiver to the throttle channel here. This is a different color, so it's easy to identify. I can then plug my ESC in, in the second throttle channel. My channel 3 goes to the receiver. And finally, the light controller. I can uh, hook up here a free pin cable. And if I want to have easy separation, I'll take another of these uh, servo extensions. This one stays permanently in the body shell. And I can connect this here. And I have now a, a separate connection and everything is uh, very neat 
And when I take away the light controller, meaning the body shell, all is up, unplug this, and I have separated the items. Now, another alternative that you can do is you can modify your receiver. The receiver has already a lot of electronics inside, and uh, especially in terms of um, microcontroller power supply that we can rely on. So what you can do is you can solder a small microcontroller inside, hook it up directly to the output pins, use one of the unused outputs to get the light controller signal out, and this way uh, you don't have any extra components that you need to install in your car. This is very convenient, but of course it voids the warranty in your receiver, and uh, that's not a great thing for most people to do. It also requires really uh, delicate solder skills, because if you do something wrong, your receiver, which may be quite a monetary value, uh, gets damaged. For my own purpose, I have created my own receivers. Uh, they already have a special output for the light controllers. It's already built in the software, so I don't have to do anything. There's another solution, which is uh, interesting if you're using two light controllers. You can make a small uh, adapter board like this. Uh, and this board uh, can plug in directly into the receiver like so, and then you can have one light controller plugged in uh, here on the top. We have on the bottom here connections for the ESC and the servo. Plug one light controller here, and that drives, for example, LEDs in the bumper of an SCX10. And I get here my second cable that connects to another light controller in the body shell, and this one can drive the LEDs that are installed in the body. It may sound uh, elaborate, but uh, the light controllers are not that expensive, so it makes a lot of sense uh, that rather than having to deal with all the wiring problems. To install the light controller in the car and to wire them up to the LEDs, uh, what I usually do is I put a piece of double-sided tape on the body shell and stick the light controller on top. And then I'm using enamel-coated wire which comes in a variety of uh, diameters. So here we have, uh, I think, 0.25. Uh, here we have uh, 0.18 in a smaller spool. These are also called magnet wire. And uh, they allow you to strip it by heating them up at about 400 degrees Celsius with a hot, uh, very hot soldering iron and then you can solder them, but they're still insulated, so if you have multiple wires together, then they won't uh, short out. I usually create uh, strands that are twist together, and uh, then uh, wire them up uh, to the front and to, uh, to the rear, uh, this is the front, this is the rear, to the car. In order to connect the LEDs, you can either directly solder them on to the LEDs. Uh, that works fine, uh, but this is sometimes a bit fragile because uh, if you accidentally brush inside here, then you could rip off the wire. So what I do nowadays mostly is uh, I use uh, strip boards and I make like light clusters. This particular body shell is uh, very inconvenient for that purpose because I had to make two boards and wire them up. But uh, this allows for, uh, for certain things, like I can assemble this light cluster outside the car, which is much easier, and then I run just uh, uh, threads of the wiring back. And here I also concealed them with some tape uh, to blend into the silver body shell. One of the main improvements of the version 4 of the light controller is that it now supports configuration without the need to go into the source code of the firmware and change it there. We have now an online based uh, tool that can be used to generate a new firmware by filling in a couple of uh, forms. So let's go through a practical example. I have here a Land Rover T110 that we want to build an RC model from. So let's have a look at the lights. So in the front we have running lights, left and right. We have the main beams and we have indicators. On the rear we have tail lights 
that light dim when the taillight function is on and that light brightly when you step on the brakes. It's a combined tail and brake light function. We also have indicators on the rear and in addition we have on the left side a single reversing light and on the right side a fog light. So let's go back to the configuration tool. You don't have to download that, you can use it straight from the internet, which has the advantage that you're always using the latest version and you get always the latest uh, firmware for the light controller. The first thing to do is we change the operation mode. So we have to decide whether we want to use servo inputs or the preprocessor. I use the preprocessor because it's just so much more convenient to wire up. In the ESC configuration, we are dealing here with a crawler where when you move the throttle from forward to reverse, it immediately goes into reverse without any brake action, which is ideal in uh, off-road driving. So I also configured the light controller to have the same behavior here. We don't have to go through other, for the other settings, so we skip them and we go straight to the LED configuration. So the light controller by default, uh, when it comes to you, it has already the firmware built in with a default configuration. We don't need that, so we clear it and start with a blank slate. So let's start with the main lights. We have here light switch position from 0 to 8. 0 means all lights off and then every click on channel 3 switches to the next light switch position and we can then fill in which of the 16 LED outputs of the light controller lights up at that light switch position. So let's start with uh, the light switch position 1. We want to have the running lights. So we use the output 0 and 1 for that. So I put in 100 for 100%. The light controller only has 33 steps, so it's not really 1% doesn't make much difference, but 50% uh, is roughly half brightness. That said, uh, the running lights may actually be too bright uh, compared to the main lights if we're using the same LEDs, for example. So I changed it actually to 50, so only half brightness, because the running lights on, an, on a real car are definitely dimmer than the main beam. So we are done with that at light switch position 1. When you switch to the next switch position, then we want to have the main beams come on. So that's, we choose LED 2 and 3. We can choose any other one, but I just follow the sequence here. So 2, we want to have them fully on, so 100% and 100%. However, what we also must make sure is that the running lights are also on in this light switch position. So again, we put in here the value 50, Otherwise, they would go on in light switch position 1 and they would go off if I switch the main beam on. And that's not what a normal car on the road does. We have an additional light that we want to switch, which is the uh, rear fog light. So we use light switch position 3 for that and the LED number 4. So we turn it on 100%, but again, we want to have all the other lights also on in that light switch position and not just the uh, fog lamp. Okay, so that basically takes care of the main lights. Let's uh, take the tail and the brake light. So we use uh, LED 5 and 6 for that. So the tail lights, the, the light uh, dim. So we put in about a third because that's also what a normal car does. It's roughly a third of the brightness, a third to a fourth of the brake light function. Again, the same for 33. Actually, what the tail light function here means is that any light switch position other than zero turns on the tail light function. We also want to have a brake light function, so for the same LED, we switch 100. So if the tail lights are on, then they light a third of the brightness. When you then engage the brakes, they light up fully, and when you release the brakes, they go back to lighting up with the tail light function if the lights are on. So the next thing we have is the uh, reversing light. We use LED number 7 for that. Full brightness, 100%. And then the last four LEDs that we need to worry about are the indicators. Uh, let's do the left ones, front and rear. Doesn't really matter, they are the same anyway. And then we have right ones 
front and rear. And also the hazard function brings them both left and right indicators. So that's automatic, we don't have to do anything. It's as simple as that. Uh, we're basically done configuring the lights for this Land Rover D110. So what we need to do now is we need to save it. The first thing to do is save a copy of the configuration. So when I click on the Save Configuration button, it asks me for a file name. Maybe I give it the value D110 here, that I remember that. And I save it and it goes into the download folder. That's very important to save, because later when you want to do changes, you can load it back in here and uh, then uh, you can modify the settings and you don't have to go through the whole process again. Now in order to put the new firmware with the configuration that we just created into the light controller, we need to save the firmware image. Again I add here a D110, the file name, and save it, and again it gets put into the download folder. So now the last thing to do is we need to get this new firmware with the configuration into the light controller. For that we need a USB to serial adapter. Sometimes they are also called USB UART or a TTL UART. If you are dealing with microcontrollers such as Arduino then chances are you already have one of those. And if not they are available from eBay or Chinese websites for less than three dollars. So we connect the USB UART to the light controller. We plug in USB to the computer. It appears directly in a special program that you can download to program it. We select our firmware image with the configuration that we have generated. We press the program button and after a few seconds it has programmed. We can now disconnect the light controller and install it in the car. For some cars the basic configuration that we carried out is uh, maybe not enough. Maybe you want to have uh, additional gimmicks uh, with your lightings. So the light controller also supports that. There is a what is so called a light programs. These are small functions that run in certain conditions uh, in terms of operation mode of the light controller. So for example here on screen we have a function that is executed whenever there is no signal received from the receiver. But you can do all kind of things. I won't go into much detail right now because that's uh, quite an elaborate topic. There is a documentation available online that you can read and it explains all the details that you need to do. And you can also contact me if you have any questions. So what this is good for, for example, is you have a light bar and you want to have each individual LED of the light bar controlled and you want to have like of running lights or chasing lights or whatever light pattern you want to have. Another application that was already asked by customers was a rotating beacon, a warning beacon, an orange one that simulates with four LEDs uh, like a rotating light in a truck as a warning light. Also that is possible to do with this configuration. But this can also be used outside of the RC domain. So we are using it also in our model railway, in the houses. They are battery operated and the light controller uh, with a custom software, with a custom light program here, turns the lights on and off and creates all kind of patterns to make it look like somebody is living in the house. Maybe the most interesting advanced function of these light programs is what I call a shelf green mode that I have created for some of my vehicles. I'm using the no signal feature. When there is no signal from the receiver, then after five seconds, the car uh, goes through a couple of cycles of the uh, switching the lights on and off in all kinds of variations to simulate like if, if somebody would be driving it. Just if you put it on a shelf, you connect the battery and you enjoy it uh, with all the lights going on and off in a realistic manner. So how do you get your own light controller? Well, you're most welcome to build one yourself, of course. There is uh, all the documentation, the schematics, the Gerber files for the circuit boards, the software, everything is available on GitHub. The link will be in the video description. 
And uh, if you have any more questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. I'd be happy uh, to get you going. I do realize that not all RC people are also electronics experts. So for that case, uh, you are also welcome to contact me. And I usually have a few pieces in stock. And uh, if you compensate me for shipping and the cost of the components, uh, then I'd be happy to send you a, a package uh, that you need for your car and also help you configure it, of course. I can only send you, of course, the circuit boards and uh, maybe the USB to serial dongle for programming, etc. But you need to supply your own LEDs and your own wires and your own server extension cords. That's, I think, easy for any RC uh, expert uh, to do. So thank you very much for watching. I hope it inspired you that you create your own vehicles with advanced lights that look very realistic and uh, turns the head of people watching them. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Bye.